Hi, this is Julie with Beadaholic, and today I'm going to teach you how to do soutache bead embroidery. And I'm actually going to teach this to you in a series of videos because there's quite a few different techniques involved here, and I wanted to break it into more manageable sections. But here we have this earring, and I'm going to show you how to make it from start to finish. In terms of the tools that you're going to need, your main tool is going to be your pair of scissors. You're going to use this for all the actual soutache work and a needle, and it's just a beading needle. I personally like as thin of a needle as possible, so this is a 12. Um, you can do it with a larger needle, but I do like a, a narrow needle myself. And then when you start adding your findings, like your dangles and your earring hook, you're going to need a pair of flush cutters, a wire looping plier, or a round nose, whatever you choose, I like the wire looping, and a chain nose plier. So those are gonna need at the end of your project. So I'm gonna clear those out for right now. Now for your supplies, you're going to need some Nymo thread. I have it here to match my color scheme. It's real important actually that your thread does match your soutache because you might end up seeing little bits of it in, with, in your design. And I've started by cutting a length of 36 inches, so one foot, tying a little knot at the end, trimming the thread close to the knot and placing it on my needle. For this particular project, you're going to need three colors of soutache. I suggest that you carefully select your colors because that really is going to have quite an impact on your design. And the more vibrant and cohesive a color scheme, I think the better the design ends up looking with all the swirls involved. So I've got three different colors, and if you're not familiar with soutache, I want to show you something. Let's see if it shows up best in this color. All right, it does fray at the ends, so you have to be aware of that but you've got this channel down the middle, you've got this rib, this core, and that's going to be what you're stitching into. So you're not going to, for the most part at least, you're not gonna be stitching on the top part, you're gonna be stitching on, in this core, and your soutache is gonna be on end. So it's not gonna be flat like this, it's going to be up like this. So that's just something to keep in mind. There's lots of different colors of soutache, there's even metallics, which are fun to work into a design. And then what you're going to be forming the soutache around are these great round beads. I've picked some six millimeter round beads as well as some four millimeter. You do not have to keep with those sizes for this project. That's what I chose to do, but you can use whatever size you like. To do the edging, we have some 11-0 seed beads. These are Toho's. And then the backing is ultra suede. Again, I picked a color that coordinated. And then we've also got some other little accent seed beads and those are 8-0 Toho's. And for the findings, we have an earring hook. We have some jump rings. These are closed jump rings. You always want to use closed jump rings if you're going to be actually stitching the jump ring into the soutache, which is what we're going to do. And I've got a couple head pins. So to begin, go ahead, cut your thread, put it onto your needle, and tie that knot. Now we need to cut six inches of each color of our soutache, and we're going to be using all three colors together. So six inches, make a cut. You'll see you can get a lot of different projects out of these three cards of soutache. Six inches, make a cut, and then the final one. So we are ready to go. And the way I lined these up is I chose to do lightest color in the middle surrounded by the two darker ones. So again, we're not going to lay these flat. We're going to lay them on their sides and sandwich that middle lighter color between the two darker ones, making sure that their ends line up. So we're going to go ahead. This is going to be a little tricky making these stand upright. And to me, it helps if I actually go ahead and sandwich them like this. Actually, you just pinch them a little bit on their top, not so that they flatten out, but just to make sure that they're all even. I'm gonna bring my ruler back because I wanna know where the three inch point is. Not quite there yet. And that looks to be three inches right there. So we're ready to make our first stitch. So we're going to take our needle. This is the interior color. So going through the interior color, right along that channel, right where your threads come together to form a V. 
we're going to go all the way through all three of our soutache ribbons and come out in the middle of the channel on the outer one. And I find that the first couple stitches are actually the most difficult in this entire process just because these are all wobbly, not being held together very well at this point. So we went through our entire stack of soutache cords, we're going to work our way to our left and we're going to make our first shaping stitch. So I'm going to move about a quarter of an inch over to the left. Again, in the middle of that ribbon where that core is, I'm just going to place my needle and go all the way through my stack. Now I'm just going to work my way down. And now I'm going to go over about 1 16th of an inch, about like so. Again, going through the middle. Might have to push your needle through, but before you pull it through, make sure you have it where you want it. Sometimes you have to pull your needle back out and re-push it through just to make sure it's right. We're going to go up and through again. And now we're going to move down. Make sure that these are lined up. And another quarter of an inch. And I'm estimating here. Go all the way through. So the shaping stitch on the interior is 1 16th and on the exterior is a quarter of an inch. So now I'm ready to pick up my first bead because without beads, the soutache doesn't really have anything to form around. So I'm going to take one of my six millimeter beads, let it slide down to the bottom. So now we're going to want to make it so that the soutache folds around the bead. And we're going to do that by taking our needle and placing it about where our knot is, which was the center of our soutache ribbons, and going all the way through. And now we're going to coax the ribbon to fold around the bead. Now, I have a gap there, and I'm not too happy about that. So, and this is probably something you're going to have to do too until you get the hang of it, or even once you do get the hang of it, I'm just going to take out that stitch, note where I had it. I had it just a little to the left of my knot, because I don't want that gap in there, and I'd rather fix that now than have to deal with it later. So, easy as just taking your needle off of your thread, re-threading it, and now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to place this a little bit further away from my knot, again on the left hand side towards the bead. And go all the way through, and let's see if that looks better. Do not be afraid to take out your stitches if you're unhappy with how something looks, especially when you're first learning. I am much happier with that. So now I feel like I can go on to the next step, which is going to be to create three more shaping stitches to the right hand side of where my bead is or the right hand side of what was the center of my soutache ribbons to begin with. So I'm going to go over a quarter of an inch in the middle of the ribbon again, all the way through all three, and pull. You'll notice I'm not pulling terribly tight. I'm not trying to make the ribbon kink up or distort in any way. I'm just securing the stack together. Again, I'm going to pinch it a little bit on the top just to make sure that all my cords are nice and even. You can call these braids, you can call these cords, you can call them ribbons. I've heard them referred to a bunch of different ways. For me, the terms are all pretty interchangeable in this instance. Probably the most common term you'll hear is braid, but there are different ways of referring to it. So I need to do one more because I did one down, one up, and I need to do one more down, approximately a quarter of an inch from where my thread exited. All right. So you see now those are sticking together nice and even. All right, so now I need to secure this end around the bead. So I'm going to do same thing that I did before. 
where I'm going to want to curve it like so. And I'm going to do that by taking my needle, going up through my bead, through all my braids, and pulling the needle through. Pinch it to see how that looks. And that looks good. There's a little bit of a gap right here, but at this stage I'm okay with that because I'm going to go ahead and pinch my soutache together in the next step, which is gonna get rid of that gap. So now our needle's out here, out the top, so that's not where I want it. I want it to be exiting out the bottom again. So I'm just going to make a stitch right through my braids, right through my bead, and come out the other side. And it's still not terribly secure at this point, and that's what we're gonna do in the next step. And I think that is a good place to stop for this first video. We've gone ahead and we've learned how to do a shaping stitch, and we've also learned how to insert a bead. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to do a two-sided join to be able to bring this closer together, make that nice and snug, as you can see here, and then we'll work on adding the other swirls as well.